Most of us would be surprised to find out that there is a spiritual truth attached to the tradition of the American backyard barbecue. I had this Barry Phillips with Tim in the Torah, day number three of the Torah portion, Re'e. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter number 12, and read verse number 20. And that verse says, When Yahweh your Elohim enlarges your border as he has promised you, and you say, Let me eat meat, because you long to eat meat, you eat as much meat as your being desires. You may be wondering, where in the world are you going with this? Well, let's break this down into two parts. Let's begin with the opening phrase, which in Hebrew reads, and I will try my best to not butcher this badly, Ki Yakiv Yahweh Elachecha et Gubalecha. So the idea of the translation is when Yahweh your Elohim widens or expands your region or your territory, one might would ask the question, why would he do that? Let's not assume that we know the answer. Why does Yah, on occasion, widen our sphere of influence, widen our opportunities, increase our possessions? Um, why would he increase the area in which we have authority over? Why would he do that? This word, Yakib, Y-I-C-H-I-B as a transliteration, Yakib. It is rooted in the word Rahab, R-A-C-H-A-B, Rahab, which means to grow wide or be enlarged. Now, if you were to examine the paleo forms of Rahab and extract from that the meanings of the various letters, you don't create a doctrine here. It's just an interesting way of looking at things and it does, on occasion, help us to understand. I think it does here. We have a resh, which can mean, among other things, reference the beginning. Then we have the letter chet, which looks like a fence that defines that which is outside, uh, outside as on the other side of the fence. And then we have a bet, a house. So rechab to grow wide or to be enlarged references the area that begins outside our house, outside of our, on our property. How far does it go? Then we have the word that ends here, gebelecha. Gebelecha is the idea of the root word gabul, G apostrophe, B-U-L, gabul, your field limits, your boundary lines that which is your region. And so if we were, again, to look at the paleo letter forms here, we have a gimel, among other things, it means to gather. And then we have the letter bet, that again, it means house. We have a letter vav, it looks like a nail. It's that which secures, fastens, attaches. And then well, a lamed, it looks like a shepherd's staff. It references the idea that we are taught or a teacher or teaching. And so we gather the family, the house, and secure them with teaching. We're told in the Torah that we are to talk about his commands, his Torah, from the, when we get up, when we lie down, while we're in the way that we are to teach and to train our future generations so that they do not depart from the teachings and so the idea is that Yah is wanting to expand our boundaries. He's wanting to grow us beyond where we are through the process of teaching our family, securing them with the Torah, so that we understand it is Yah who gives the increase. It is Yah who expands us. Yes, we work hard. Yes, we make our own efforts. But ultimately, while we sow and while we pray for rain, Yah is the one who gives the increase. Now, if we go over to the book of Bereshit, or Genesis, chapter number 26, we can read verse 22, and we see an, an additional part of this. It says, and this is the days of Yitzhak, or Isaac, when he is redigging his father Abraham's wells. After several attempts of redigging the wells and then they being taken by his adversaries, verse 22 says, And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not strive over it, and he called its name Rehoboth. 
and said, for now, Yahweh has made room for us. He's extended my boundaries. He has given me an additional region. And we shall be fruitful in the land. So there is an understanding then that Yah will give us an opportunity where we can expand, where we can grow, and it not be contested. If we go over to the book of Shemot, or Exodus, chapter number 34, uh, if we look at verse 23 and 24, it says, Three times in the year all your men are to appear before the Master, Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, for I dispossess the nations before you. I'm going to clear this land out, he says, and shall enlarge your borders. Here we see that principle applied. And let no one covet your land when you go up to appear before Yahweh your Elohim three times in the year. So while you're not home, while you're not there to protect your land, Yah says, I know that you've come to visit with me, to worship me, to obey and to honor me. And therefore, I will protect your land in your absence, for I will drive your adversaries out. So there is this principle then that Yah is wanting to expand our boundaries, secure our boundaries, and allow you and I to enjoy the bounty of good things. Now, the second part of this is the eating of meat. The continuing idea is that our soul, in a sense of security, will say, I want to eat meat. Rashi, the ancient commentator, says, a person should not desire to eat meat except out of broadness of hands and wealth. So in a time of abundance and security and favor, we want to celebrate and eat that which is special, meat. It just so happens that in the three meals that I've had today, I've had meat in each one of them, and not over an abundance of meat, but a little here, a little there. To sit down and to have meat should be an idea, wow, roast beef for supper. This is special. We got company coming. It's the special idea. At least it was in ancient times. Now we eat, you know, a burger for lunch. We've had breakfast meat with our eggs. We've had uh, pot roast or something for supper, chicken on the barbecue. You know, we, we indulge and we eat meat all the time and we think nothing about it unless you're a vegetarian. But for a lot of us, it's the idea of eating meat. Why? What it is saying to us is that we feel secure. Uh, it's not extravagant because we expect to be able to do the same tomorrow and throughout the week. We don't anticipate shortage. We don't anticipate hard times. Here in America, we have lived affluently, even in harder times than what we may be in currently, even in times where uh, money was a little bit on the short side. We've had food to eat, by and large, most of us. We choose, you know, what clothes we're going to wear for the day. We have transportation. We have a comfortable bed to sleep in at night. We have this expectation of abundance and enough on a continuing basis. And so spiritually, what this is saying to us, I am safe. I am secure. Remember that the security comes from not our own personal wealth, not the strength of our own hands, not the ingenuity of our own thinking and minds, but the favor of Yah, because we have chosen to gather the family and to relate to them the purity and pricelessness of his word. When we have gathered together and established the fact for one and all in our homes, our favor comes from Yah. Then he expands our boundaries and enables us to be prosperous and blessed. When we're worshiping him, he will guard that which pertains to us. Has the American backyard barbecue fooled us? And the sense of, ah, it'll be all right. It always has been. It always will be. Uh, trust in the word. 
not on the meat in, on your plate. And we'll see you again tomorrow. To then shalom. Thank you.